Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy, Brave Alice Tears here. Now in today's session we're going to be looking at the ovarian cycle. We've started a series where we're looking at the menstrual cycle as a whole and we have done uh, one session already where we have looked at the hormones that do control and regulate the menstrual cycle. And if you have not looked at that video, please do look and check on uh, that video on my YouTube channel which is Brain Shakers Academy and right into it we'll be looking at the ovarian cycle today now let's quickly get into the ovarian cycle and see what happens uh, during this cycle we already made mention that the menstrual cycle has two main phases that is the uterine cycle and the ovarian cycle today we're looking at the ovarian cycle now what happens during the ovarian cycle just from the terminology itself ovarian is what happens within the ovary now i have drawn something that appears like a number line here where we have 0 and 14 and 28 uh, days so with this explanation we're going to be using a normal uh, uh, average cycle which is a 28 a day cycle and as we're looking at the 28 a day cycle we will also look at what happens in that 28 days from 0 to about 28 days so if you allow me to just quickly uh, put a line there and just mark it with a star there and then I will take it that here you have FSH and then on the other end you have LH okay so these are the hormones and we have looked at these hormones this is a follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone now the ovarian cycle has two main uh, sub phases that is the follicular phase and the luteal phase so the one that is controlled by the follicle stimulating hormone is what is known as the follicular phase and then the one controlled by the luteinizing hormone is known as the luteal phase okay now what happens during the follicular phase from the term follicular this is the process of follicular genesis or the formation of one graphian follicle so the follicle for it to actually develop it goes through a number of stages and i have looked i've done another video on oo genesis to explain how a follicle is developed that is from the pre stage to the antral stage and then pre-ovulatory and then uh, getting on to what happens after the process of ovulation as well but quickly uh, let's uh, just uh, do a recap on what happens uh, during this stage so during this stage you have high amounts of the follicle stimulating hormone and we did mention that this is coming from the adenohypophysis or the anterior portion of the pituitary gland then affecting the ovary because we're looking at the ovarian cycle it means that we are in the ovary just right there so the follicle stimulating hormone now is going to get to the uh, follicles in there that is the granulosa cells that are within the follicle there and it is promoting the maturation of those uh, follicles so whichever for follicle so within there you have all those follicles in the ovary and whichever follicle in here is going to be more sensitive or develop more receptors to the follicle stimulating hormone then becomes the dominant uh, graphian follicle and when it becomes the dominant graphian follicle it will be the one that will obviously go through this process and then do the process or undergo the process of ovulation and then continues to the 28 days so that is what the follicle stimulating hormone is coming to do so you have more follicle stimulating hormone in the follicular phase and that is just to allow the development of the follicles and then the maturation of those follicles now as the follicles are being developed in here there will also be a pro pro production of the estrogen hormone so the estrogen hormone is very important because it plays key role in making sure that prior to ovulation the endometrium also is being prepared there is regeneration that is beginning um, to happen in uh, the um, in the endometrium so that if ovulation does happen and then there is fertilization then the endometrium will be ready to receive this uh, fertilized ovum for implantation and at the same time the same estrogen is also going to be acting on the cervical um, 
portion of the uterus that is on the cervix and on the cervix it is going to increase the cervical mucus and when it increases the cervical mucus it is not going to produce very viscous uh, cervical mucus and this is what you may notice as a cervical discharge prior to that the high amount of estrogen then will lead to an increase as well in that cervical um, discharge and that happens prior to ovulation and for those that are practicing natural uh, uh, contracept contraceptive uh, methods they would utilize that increase in the cervical um, discharge or the cervical mucus that is being produced as an indicator that ovulation is about to happen and therefore they will abet or avoid having uh, sexual intercourse around that time because it will be an indicator for them that they're almost ovulating and pregnancy can be elicited at any time. Now, that is about the follicular uh, uh, follicular phase and what happens in the follicular phase. So within this time, you have high amounts of follicle stimulating hormone and a high amount of estrogen to kickstart the process of preparing for pregnancy if pregnancy does occur. Now, prior to the movement to the stage of ovulation and before we get to the uh, uh, luteal phase about one to two days prior to ovulation there is an increase in the amount of luteinizing hormone that is being produced and this luteinizing hormone we already mentioned that it does come to affect the thicker follicular cells that are just around the granulosa cells on the uh, developing a uh, graphian uh, follicle so the thicker follicular cells then produce those androgens to increase the sexual appetite or the libido so that coitus can happen so that at the time that ovulation does happen then there will be spermatozoa that would be uh, would have already been deposited into the vagina and then will come and meet with the ovulated ovum for fertilization to occur. So this is ovulation happening around the 14th day in a normal 28 day cycle. And don't forget that we also mentioned that there are people that have 21 day cycle, others have a 35 day day cycle but the average being 28 days so around the 14th day then you have ovulation which is just the release of that um, um ovum and so the rise prior to the ovulation also of the luteinizing hormone is what then facilitates this process of ovulation because we talked about the luteinizing hormone then increasing collagenase activity thereby allowing the antropotion of the ovary or uh, a portion of the ovary to be weakened or digested where collagen is going to be digested and then there's a weaker portion so that when there is now ovarian muscular contraction then there is release of that ovum and allow it to be picked by the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube then we would be in the luteal phase now what happens in the luteal phase so the luteal phase is going to have a high amount of the luteinizing hormone why because the luteinizing hormone now is coming in to continue because um, uh, the influence on the corpus luteum so the remnant of the ovary so you have cells this is the ovary let's take it that this is the ovum that has been produced then the remnant here of cells that remain after the ovary has produced that ovum is what we refer to as the corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum will still be under the influence of the two main hormones, that is follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And because of that influence, the corpus luteum will continue to produce the progesterone hormone and the estrogen hormone so that this ovum that has been produced, if it does get fertilized, then pregnancy is going to be allowed to continue. Now, because the corpus luteum is under the influence of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, and then it uh, continues to produce estrogen and progesterone. So you have a progesterone hormone here being produced and you have the estrogen hormone as well being produced. Now, because 
of these hormones that are being produced. When they are in higher amounts, then they have a negative feedback mechanism to the hypothalamus to regulate the control, to regulate and control the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone amounts that are going to then be produced. And as a result, these follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, these were the two hormones that were supporting the functioning of the corpus luteum. Now, when there is a decline in their amount, it means that this then degenerates and becomes a corpus albicans, and it has no capacity to produce the progesterone and the estrogen. And because there will be no more production of estrogen and progesterone, the levels then drop. And it is the drop in these uh, levels that will then allow the process of menstruation to happen because of the spasms that are going to uh, um, be elicited. And once those spasms have been elicited, now you are also going to notice uh, you're also going to notice that there will also be prostaglandins that are going to be um, uh, produced. And those prostaglandins also then intensify the spasms, making a reduction into the oxygen levels and the blood that is being uh, supplied to the uh, endometrial lining. And then the functionalis layer is then going to be shared. Also to make mention on the production of estrogen, you will also notice that there are basically three forms of estrogen that are produced. So of the three um, that are produced, you have what we call E1, you have what we call E2, and you have what we call E3. So E1, which is estron, is a hormone that is produced when one gets into the stage of menopause. E2, which is known as estradio, is the hormone that is produced mostly during the reproductive period. And the hormone that we're talking about here that will continue to facilitate the development of the endometrium is the E2 hormone. And once pregnancy has then occurred, the hormone that will be in higher amounts is going to be the E3, which we refer to as the estrio. Okay, so basically that is what happens during the ovarian cycle where we look at all those uh, hormones that is the follicular phase and then the luteal phase. And if you did find this particular video interesting and helpful in understanding what happens during the menstrual cycle, please give it a thumbs up, drop your comments in the comments section. I would like to hear from you. And as always, I would encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is the Brain Shakers Academy. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.